welcome. Nice little mild afternoon on the patio. Anybody in the mood for a gentle repot, hopefully, of my Lelia honey. Got her a couple of months ago, and I'm way overdue in repotting her. Not because I was eager to get her out of the bark and get her into, you know, rock, like the inorganic setup that I prefer for Rapiculus Lelias, but because I didn't see the signs that I want to see, new root growth, etc. And now I am way behind <laughs> because she has been actively growing roots and they are already further along than I would like. So this is what we got. Let's see how easily this spark falls off. Way too advanced for my liking. We got some cleanup to do. That's fair. I just hope nothing really sticks to the bark. No root tips get damaged. Well, by the feel of it, maybe we even have two of them in here. I've soaked her with calcium and magnesium several times because I've always anticipated, oh, gorgeousness. I've always anticipated doing this now three times and every time something's come up. So <laughs> she's had a lot of calcium and magnesium recently and seaweed. So she's got her grow on, which is awesome. I'll just be peeling away gently. And I'm not gonna rush this standing up. I'm gonna make this a beautiful therapeutic repot for a late afternoon in southern Spain where the breeze is acceptable. It's not blowing a hoolie on the patio, which is a nice change. The traffic is <laughs> pretty heavy. I'm gonna try and be considerate with the audio about that, but I just need to decompress. It hasn't been easy living recently. And if you're interested, well, you let me know in the comments because I may yap away about something a little bit personal and I don't really want to mix too much of personal into what the orchids are about. But yeah, um, you know, apart from my stories of my youth in Kenya, that yes, those are fun. But yeah, let me sit down, continue plucking away at this as best as possible, get you in as close as possible and let's have a chat. So I'm gonna put out a disclaimer here. This is not woe is me. I'm talking reality, I'm talking circumstances. Just bringing you up to speed. If maybe you find also that recently my voice is, the cadence has been a little bit off. I have uh, had four job interviews and well, my age and my physical condition isn't up to what they were looking for. Now, in the States, when I was there, there was no discrimination policy. There was nothing about, well, you're too old, or we can't make the job work around your mobility issues. And, you know, if you have a bad day, you cannot move. I can still execute my job in other ways and be productive at it. That's not the case here in Spain. Definitely, they don't care about your age here, if you, even if you have the qualifications. So, yeah, I'm very, very worried. Anyway, yeah, so I've been very busy trying to look for a job and it's not working out. And I've been extremely flexible also with regards to my qualifications, etc. And the problem is mobility issues with regards to me and them thinking I will be limited. Now, you can also say, why were you so honest about mobility issues? That's just me. I am honest. I put it all on the table. They, if I'm going to put my resume out there and everybody knows my qualifications, also my past reputations here in the coast, I also have to put out mobility issues because there's no way I'm going to start a job new and then within a week or something, I may not be able to get up and walk as quickly or hustle the way I used to be able to. And then, you know, it just, I, I just don't like it. So everything up front, I'm not, dis I'm not hiding the reality of my circumstances. So... The job hunt is still ongoing. Now, another thing I've done is just to stay motivated and uh, keep my life, you know, let's say, try to find quality in my circumstances and not be so stressed about issues. I watched a lot of TED Talk also to see, you know, 
how can I change my frame of mind, my mental makeup so that I, you know, I don't just, you know, collapse in a heap of despair. Meanwhile, the orchids are helping me a lot, of course, you know, orchids, king, they're the reason I get up in the morning and uh, try to function. But mentally, of course, uh, it's not, it's not going very well. So a lot of TED talk, and there was one talk that I thought was amazing, and it made me think, and well, I haven't found my three words that would fit me or what I'm trying to be, you know, moving forward, considering my circumstances and maybe changing up my life to suit my current well-being or lack thereof. I, I haven't found those words yet, but in this TED talk, the lady was saying that, you know, you've always built your life around your work. And I felt like she was speaking to me. Um, have you ever considered building your work around your life? And I just thought, what's the difference? I identify myself, you know, as, as my work because people say, so what do you do? And then, of course, you answer with your, let's say, your work, your job profile, etc. Et and then, you know, I, it started to click that, yes, my life was my professional career. I built my life around my professional career because... If, as far as I'm concerned, if you are a responsible person in the in society working away, then, you know, the kids go to school, you go to work, and, you know, you do your parental responsibilities also around the work because it pays the bills. So <laughs> I'm like, yeah, of course, I, you know, as a professional, I built my life around my work. But I never thought about my life. My life was, you know, what everybody does. Children, this, that, and the other. Now, my children are grown up and even, never mind the, never mind the details, but I have to kind of, I have to think of a reset. I change the chip in my head. Please don't tell me I cracked it. I have to change the chip in my head and say, look, if nobody is going to employ me and be flexible enough with regards to the fact that I have occasional mobility issues, which of course can get worse as time goes by, and let's be real about it, then I have to change what it is that I'm going to be doing or looking for in the future. And I've checked on remote, you know, internet sites to see if I can do remote work from home and... Well, so far, I've come up a little bit short because everybody, you know, wants IT techs, etc. And I'm not confident enough that my IT qualifications would help somebody, you know, if they gave me access to their computer for me to fix something. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm looking into those options as well. But back to this TED Talk, to build your work around your life. And I've kind of broke it down. My life in the past two years have been YouTube. Um, my life has been very focused on the orchids in the past four years since I built this collection. So the conclusion to that would be if I were to go along the lines of this lady who made me think about how to build a productive, happy life that is fulfilled and doesn't revolve around work but pays the bills. And she was talking to university students. So, you know, here I am middle-aged, well into the autumn of my life, and I just broke a root tip. And she was, this talk was for university students, but it's never too late to start, really, is it? Anyway, so I'm thinking, well, my life are my orchids. My life is my orchids, sorry, bad English. And my life is YouTube, as it's been for the past two years. But YouTube isn't paying my bills, so I have to do something outside of that. It's just not working out. I honestly thought that I was able to, you know, grow my channel and be successful at it with the knowledge that I can bring to the table. And also, you know, with bringing along other channels, I don't, I've never been the one to ask for help. I've always been the one in the background providing help and support, even unsolicited sometimes, which is not often very welcome, but it would appear that on YouTube that is welcome. However, I'm just not, when I look at the numbers and stuff of my channel, things are just not, it's not happening. And it, and maybe it's happening, but it's, it's not happening fast enough, which freaks me out if this is going to be my main source of income. And yes, it has been in the past years, but it hasn't even paid an electricity bill yet. So 
I want you to know that if there is any, any chance as you watch this video that you could, you see, asking for help is so foreign to me. I, I just don't know how to do it. If there's anything that you can do to promote my channel, get it out to a bigger audience, encourage people to subscribe. Unfortunately, you see YouTube still has these milestones where they will pay attention to a, a channel. And mine is definitely not anywhere near a milestone of sorts for that to happen. But I am not asking for a handout. I'm not asking for a freebie. I don't want to be expecting others to do the work for me and I'm just growing, but I, I am prepared to put more effort into my channel if that's even at all possible. Right now I'm I'm focusing on my channel 14, 16 hours a day and also focusing on other channels through the Care Collab when they come up and, you know, we get together and talk about an orchid and how we care for it. So this is, um, yeah, this is... <laughs> I even thought of making a video specifically to talk about, you know, I need help. Uh, I really do. Clearly it doesn't seem like YouTube is interested in new channels in Europe because since 2020 the cyber regulations have changed in Europe. There's so many more restrictions, meaning that there's other demographics that YouTube is so much more interested in promoting, you know, Brazil, India, Asia, Far East and all that. <sighs> I'm limping, I'm scared, I'm I'm embarrassed, yes. I'm embarrassed that I'm asking and, you know, reaching out for help. I never expected that I needed to do that because I had enough confidence in myself when I started this journey to share my collection and, you know, put out information that maybe can help somebody, also help other channels grow. I never actually thought I, it would come to this. And then there's another video that I'm so scared to put out, but I filmed it a couple of months ago and I don't want to air it, but it's called, I can't do this anymore. I, ca I, I can't, well, I can't live like this anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm scared out of my wits. I, there's, there's no other two ways to say it. I'm not trying to pull on anybody's heartstrings. I'm just, I'm just asking if it's possible that my videos get shared out and I know some of you are doing that that maybe you know more shout out on other channels that see this video if you have a YouTube channel more shout out maybe and help me out that way in in a way if you have a channel please I'm asking you for shout outs to encourage people to come to my channel to subscribe also the demographic it's it's important that the demographic gets recognized by YouTube, but they don't have, they don't have the, the need at the moment to, to do anything with regards to new channels in Europe. And once again, I am completely and totally embarrassed, but I'm going to put this video out because I don't want to ever have to air the other video that says, I can't do this anymore. I can't, I, I, ugh, you know, I don't want to, I will definitely, let everybody know when I, I've reached the limit of my existence, uh, let's say when it comes to financially. Um, I, I At the moment it's fine, but as these things take time also to generate income on YouTube, then I I can only say, look, um, can, we, can, can we start now? Can you help me? Is there any way that you can help me just by giving my channel shout outs, by sharing my videos? And once again, thank you so very, very much to everybody that's been doing that, even if they haven't told me about it. I, I, would, I would really, really be eternally grateful. And it doesn't mean that, you know, in six months or so I'm going to reach a target, but I would be eternally, eternally grateful if, if there were more eyes on my channel. Like I said, I don't, I don't want a freebie. I don't want a handout. I just need somebody to, you know, drop me a bone something and this may all sound very self-centered and selfish but i'm not that's not my intention you see the care collabs were also made for a reason so that everybody would grow in a similar fashion at the same time it's just not working out that you know my channel has the same chance as other channels 
in other demographics of the world. And again, that's because of the EU regulations. It's really something about, you know, best marketing is word of mouth. And I would love it if I could ask you to be my, my what, my, my help, my assistance. You're so encouraging on my comments. And when I say in my comments that the motivation, it's encouraging, I really appreciate it. It means a lot. All of that is true because, you know, I wake up sometimes with anxieties and I'm not sure can I actually film today or can I not film today? And then I think of you guys and, you know, your comments and how motivating it is to read. And then I'm like, okay, hit the record button. There's so much going on in the collection at the moment. Hit the record button and share it while you still can. Because one day, if you can't do this anymore, you're going to absolutely regret it. And it's true. It's true. Every day that I had so much wind, for example, on the patio and I couldn't film what I wanted to film, it was annoying. I mean, I had enough material to work with that I had recorded. So it wasn't like I was out of doing anything at night or, you know, there's plenty to do with YouTube, but I missed it. It was like I missed talking to you guys. And even though I'm here sat in Spain, I'm still having a conversation with you. That is, if you haven't clicked out by now because you're thinking this lady is just about to lose her mind. Well, you, you're probably right about that. I am about to lose my mind because I'm so, so scared. And right now, as I'm doing this with my orchid in a relaxed state of mind, plucking up the courage to tell you about it and ask for help. When it comes to editing, my frame of mind might have changed. And well, if you see the video, it's me just staying the course and putting the courage out there to ask for help. Because one thing is now I'm talking about it. So that's a big hurdle out of the way. You know, it took me a little bit, a hot minute before... <laughs> I actually, you know, thought I'm going to do this while I have a repot going so that I'm not just sounding like I'm having a boo-hoo, poor me video. I'm going to, you know, do something while at it. Also helps my mind. Um, another thing, the next hurdle is to get through this through editing. <laughs> and if you're seeing this video, it means I managed to get through it. I managed to have the courage to ask for help. I managed to upload it and I am apprehensive about the response <laughs> as well <laughs> because this is not a good subject at any time, not even to listen to. You come here for knowledge, entertainment and a little bit of sass every once in a while. Probably don't want to be listening to this. So if you're still here, thank you so very, very much. My cat Leahoni, I will always be a reminder of me putting up the courage to ask for help and to admit that I'm scared out of my wits for the future, my financial future. Honestly, I'm scared out of my mind. Never really found myself in this situation before. This is a first, but uh, that is what is currently happening in my life. And it, it's taking its mental toll on me. That is for sure. <laughs> if it wasn't for the orchids and if it wasn't for all of you, watching my videos with your comments. Um, yeah, <laughs> I won't even, I don't even want to go there with that thought. I'm not going to think of the negative. I'm going to hold my breath when I post this video. I'm saying when, because I'm really, really, you see, it is so foreign to me to ask for help. So, so foreign. It's always been the other way around. I just never thought that I would be struggling so badly after two years, so badly with the growth of my channel. I thought that if I put heart and soul into it and invest in the equipment, phew, the equipment investment, oh my word. I was breaking out and perspiring when I paid for the computer and when I paid for the camera even the tripod, even the little things for the car so that I can hopefully vlog one day from the car, which I haven't done for the Orchid Ninjas, my members. I haven't done that yet because the last time I filled up my car with gas, I paid 80 euros for a full tank. That was a Mercedes three, four years ago that you paid 80 euros to fill up. This is a Ford Focus. 
80 euros is what I spend a month for groceries. If that, it's like, you know, I've got, I want, I want to do things and I can't afford to do them. I can't drive into town, pay for parking. And even though it's something that is great for my channel, I can't afford to do it. Hey, full disclosure here, man, full disclosure. So can you help me? Can you help me get my channel out there, recognized, noticed, and um, promote it? At, give me some shout outs, encourage people to come and have a look, encourage people to subscribe, and let me completely apologize if you feel that this video was totally inappropriate. I understand. I understand that completely and fully, and I do not question or judge that opinion at all. It would hurt if that's the case. It would hurt because everybody has their struggles and not everybody puts their struggles out there. So it really would hurt if, you know, I got some negative comments and, but you know, your opinion is valuable to me and I've always encouraged dialogue. That includes this dialogue. Sometimes, sometimes one has to have hard conversations and this one certainly it ranks right up there with being very, very difficult. Sometimes I prefer not to talk about these things even to myself in my head, but the time has come. I am scared out of my mind and I hope that you are not offended by it. I hope that you receive what I'm saying. It's coming from the right place. I have good intentions. I'm not trying to be selfish about the growth of my channel. I just need help. I am not ashamed of what I'm saying. I am embarrassed of what I'm saying, that I'm outing myself like this. Not ashamed of the circumstances. It is what it is. I'm ashamed of the fact that my channel hasn't grown the way I had thought, and I thought I had realistic expectations as opposed to, you know, pipe dreams. That, yes, I'm ashamed about, but I'm not ashamed to ask for help. I'm just having a hard time doing so. That is all. That's there, There's a difference, and I hope you... I hope I express that properly without stuttering or stumbling my way through it. You know, if you were sat with me on my patio right now, trust me, I would be telling you this. And let's just say you ask me, how's it going? Well, that's your answer. It's not going well at all. And um, those are the reasons. So please help me if you can, not financially. This is not a financial plea for help. This is just a plea for help. Can you get my channel out there so that I can get the attention of YouTube's algorithm at some point in time? That is what I'm asking help for. Of course, the rest is then up to me to make people happy to want to watch my content. I just need more eyes on my channel. So if you've made it this far, I want to say thank you so very, very much for listening. I really appreciate it. And it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But once again, an orchid helped me through something rather difficult and stressful. So let's potter up. Thank you so much for still being here. If you are still here, I really appreciate that a lot. Thank you. I hate it. If I turned anybody off, the fact that you're here, you get to see this beautiful sight. Hey, how about that then? So me and my moaning about not liking it when orchid roots are that long. This has turned out pretty well. I cracked one root tip and I broke off another one. But this little Lelia honey is just vigorous. So classic standard setup. That's what she's going to get from me. We have our pot. We have crocking and we have recycled wet ceramics with just a bit of seashell in there from a long time ago, back in the day, calcium. So let's get the crocking in there first. Try to get it up to the holes. This is the large lava rock that I have. I don't want to be using completely and 100% all of my large lava rock, so I have a little bit smaller lava rock. That's going to go just a little layer, because I have plenty of that size. The holes of the semi-hydro setup are over there, so we need our tag because I put that in at the first go, which is 
an indicator as to where the holes are should I move this orchid around when it comes to flushing and also how I position the orchid when it comes to light training. This is a great, great little visual I consider for my purposes. And then in some instances I try to get the tag in as soon as possible so that I am not jiggling around trying to blindly put the tag in and possibly stabbing roots at the same time. Beautifully cleaned up. Now, judging by the height, I can fill up with ceramic straight away. There are kind of two pieces in here, but I am loath to separate them because that would just do more damage. So this is how I like her. This is the height at the moment that I like her at. Hence, no ceramic bottom layer before we place the orchid. We're just going in with ceramic. And then this is new stuff. You can see smaller kernels in there. That is not strategic or intentional. That's just the way my ceramic arrives. And once it's boiled, etc., and cleaned up, usually the little bits stay at the bottom and they then find their way to the top of the container that I have while I hold on to the ceramic before actually getting to use it. So that's not intentional. It's not here nor there. I want the ceramic to be my wicking media, keep the roots nice and wet because throughout the time that she's been with me, I have made sure that my roots towards the last three weeks while she was still in her nursery container with the bark, they were staying wet more often than they were staying dry. So these roots that are now growing are not really accustomed to a wet dry cycle. Give her a little bit of a shake and raise her up just to double check. Let's see about the height. How are we doing? Can we get her up a little bit higher? She is not a climber, so that helps. And let the ceramic settle down. If you see my other repots, you probably know that I like to fill my pots with water so that the leka can gently fall into place and into the gaps. I am not doing that. My preferred way of potting up ceramus is while it's dry, otherwise it'll stick to my hands. And it doesn't fall into the nooks and crannies as well when it's wet as it does when it's dry. So that is the difference. There we go. How are we doing? These little bits and pieces right here, they need to come off the base. That's far too wet. You got to make sure that the base stays nice and dry because, you know, winter is coming. Oh, I know I'm saying that in July, but you know, you know what I mean? Winter is coming. So potting up with long term in mind. And I'm loving the roots. I'm so glad that the bark came off relatively easy with the least amount of damage, especially considering what I was talking about. Okay, so we just fill up a little bit more. There we go. And the rest, just hold on. Don't lift yourself out. Then the rest will just be a top dressing of lava rock. And the reason I do that is because ceramics can dry out very, very quickly during the hot months of the year in my climate. And I will be misting a little bit too much for my liking, which will make the base a little bit too wet, even though I have quite a lot of natural airflow around here. You would think it's not a problem, but uh, <laughs> with all that airflow, the misting increases and it's just an issue that, you know, I don't want the ceramics to be drying out at the top, I want to keep it nice and wet to counteract any premature drying of the ceramics at the surface. The fact that it looks nice is a bonus. Now we add the good stuff, more calcium, magnesium and seaweed because that was on the menu for the other orchids today. So <laughs> it's going to get a good top up of more calcium and magnesium and watch that little fur ball over there move or not. Baloo just doesn't care. <laughs> All right, that's it. Very happy to get this done. Especially very happy that I didn't do a lot of damage on the roots. 
apart from the collateral damage that I did. Anyway, once again, if you've made it to this stage of the video, thank you so much for your support. Thank you for your time watching and thank you for hopefully understanding what I was on about while I was taking the bark off the roots. You are very much appreciated and any, any help regarding getting my channel to a bigger audience, if there's anything you can do, then I would really appreciate that as well. And thank you in advance for being so understanding. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition though, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.